I got my Starbucks. We're ready. Um, Java chip probably wasn't the best idea. Sorry if I have anything in my teeth today. Next time I won't get that for lives. I hope she doesn't have to go outside. Okay. So I think I'm going to get started and I'm hoping that I can um, save this video and add it to my Instagram TV later. I'm not sure how to do this. I'm learning this stuff as I go. So. Today I wanted to talk about five things I do for spiritual wellness. I have to share my notes. It's just all over the place notes. So I'm going to be looking down at my notes. Um, the live stuff is super new to me and I want to keep the train rolling. So the first thing I do want to say is that I'm not a guru, right? I am a human here, um, learning lessons just like everyone else. So I am not like on some higher level than anyone else, okay? Um, and actually the days of the guru are over, in my opinion. Um, you don't need a third party in order to connect with the divine. And to me, there's no room for dogma in spirituality it's just whatever feels good to you okay so what i'm going to talk about today are just things that i do for my spiritual wellness and so you can take whatever resonates with you and leave the rest um okay so i'm gonna get started with the first thing that i do for my spiritual wellness you can probably guess is meditation and um, for a long time, I did guided meditations only. Um, but lately, I've been doing the silent ones. So I literally lay on the floor in here and just quiet my mind or work on that. I'll go into that in a minute. And um, just be, okay? And I wrote down a couple of notes last night about this. Um, guided ones are really great. And um, sometimes if I can do two in a day, then I'll do a guided one also. Like later, not back to back. Um, so when, but when you're sitting in silence, it gives you a chance to really sit in your power. You hear that word, those words a lot. It just means sitting in your own energy. Okay, being comfortable with what your own energy feels like and with the quiet. Like a lot of us don't like to be with ourselves or by ourselves um, because then we're alone with our thoughts. And so we have to keep it going, keep it busy, keep things moving through here so that we don't have to deal with the thoughts that come into our mind. So for me, the silent ones have really helped excuse me, because of the fact that it's giving me an opportunity to work on redirecting thoughts. When people say quiet your mind or anything like that, um, stop those thoughts or whatever. I don't know if you've noticed before, but it kind of feels like it runs on its own. It's not really something that you can stop. So redirecting is something I prefer to use. So if you get something come up that you don't want, right? Because you're trying to be quiet, you're trying to quiet your mind. There are a couple of things you can do. You can just focus on your breath. Like you can literally say in your head, in when you breathe in and out when you breathe out. Just keep doing that, in, out. You can count your breaths. You can um, even 
focus on a mantra, like say a couple of words, just a couple of words that you say, um, or just one word over and over again until it's kind of comfortable, then leave it. And then if they, if they need to come back, you know, if the thoughts start coming back, then you can redirect again. And um, I know for me, sometimes I'll do, um, Brendan Burchard talks about the one, he just says release. And that seems to work too, because it kind of helps wanting to pull it down, like release your shoulders, release the tension. And then also um, it helps redirect the thoughts, okay? Because your mind will run amok. That's what it does sometimes. So we want to, um, I do the quiet one right now because I'm learning how to better redirect those and also the difference between what's my energy and what is spirit's energy, what is um, specifically um, Archangel Metatron, who I'm working with right now, what does his energy feel like? How do I know when he's here? And if I'm doing so many guided things, I can't pay that attention as well, okay? So that's for me, that's number one. Um, number two is grounding. So grounding is really important because a lot of the time, especially I feel like if you're trying to do a spiritual practice, we use from here up in our chakras a lot, but we kind of forget about everything else down here so we can kind of end up feeling kind of spacey and so what we want to do is bring the energy all the way through okay and kind of activate all of the chakras and um what I, my favorite way to do this is literally sitting outside and putting my feet in the grass um and looking at nature um, I'm looking at my window right now, um, looking at nature, soaking in everything, listening to the birds and things like that. Now, that only works for a specific time of the year. Um, I don't do that, obviously, in the wintertime. Honestly, in the wintertime, too, I don't feel very, um grounded a lot of times it's difficult it's more difficult for me during the winter time because I can't do the outside things that I want to do I can't go outside and just sit and soak in nature um that is my favorite way to do it though but if you can't go outside and do that there's a couple other things that I wrote down here um I know a really common one that I do is um <clears throat> you just visualize roots growing out from the bottoms of your feet and going down into the center of the earth and kind of just being an anchor in there and drawing that energy up um, and also bringing the energy from here down so they kind of meet in the middle. Um, that one's really great. I like to pretend, I like to imagine that I am a like a really big oak tree in that and, and try and feel what it feels like on the bottoms of your feet. If you focus on that, you can kind of feel like a tingling. Um, some people don't like that one. So I did include a third grounding exercise. So like I was talking about before, we kind of, when we're doing spiritual work, a lot of times we just focus on these chakras, heart, throat, third eye and crown, right? And when we do that, we're always up here, we kind of can feel a little spacey. So what we want to do is visualize a column of light coming in through the crown and we're going to pull it all the way down. Okay, so through all the chakras down through the center of the body and visualize just pulling that energy down. Okay, all the way, all the way down. You can see it throughout your whole body, through your feet, even if you want to as well. But it's just like, like a column of light through, through your whole body. Okay, so, because usually the light sits here. We want to pull it all the way through. So that's another good way to do grounding if you're not 
um, as comfortable with or you don't like the um, the roots one because some people don't like that but like I said my favorite is the grass and the sitting outside because I always say I'm a lizard on a hot rock <laughs> I need my like time to sit outside so that's number two okay number three for me is um, Hertz music and I know you guys have probably heard of this before but it's something that I find is really important for me for how I feel I'll listen to it while I'm cooking or cleaning or doing pretty much anything it's running in the background um, but Hertz music if you don't know has different frequencies in it so like Hertz like the different frequencies of sound um, and there are different ones that are related to the different um, healings and connections. So you could have one for like physical pain, you could have one for opening your third eye, balancing your heart chakra, throat chakra, um, ascension. Um, there's literally many, many different um, vibrational matches on the Hertz thing. You'll have to look it up. All I know is it works and there's different ones for different um, levels of healing or connection that you're looking for. Um, so if you want to, you can Google Hertz music um, to see what the different frequencies help with. Or you can just search it on YouTube and then you'll come up with a bunch of different ones <clears throat> that you can actually listen to. Sorry, you guys. <clears throat> I got like a throat, <clears throat> throat chakra thing happening. Okay. So if you search it on YouTube, you'll have um, a bunch of different ones come up that you can listen to. Um, my favorite channel for this um, is called the Shamanic Meditation Channel. And they have um, these Hertz ones, but they also have some Native American chanting and drumming, which is like my favorite thing. So um, I will, if I can figure out the replay to put on the... Um, Instagram TV I'll link that in the description of that video because I I'm really loving those and funny enough I didn't even subscribe to that channel I just was on my YouTube one day and that was in my subscription list and I asked everybody and they didn't do it <laughs> so um, I've been listening to it and I feel like it was definitely something that I was supposed to be listening to because I love it and it helps a lot Okay, so number four is um, Himalayan salt bath. So like the pink salt um, once a week. Now, you don't have to do this once a week. You can do it once a month or once every other week. Or um, if you have like a really bad week every day, it doesn't matter. Um, and you can put as much as you want or as little as you want in the water. Um, I usually do like a half of a cup, but some people do like two cups. You know, you can put as much as you feel guided to use, okay? But there's something about salt water. Um, water in general is so good um, for us because it's, um, what is it? It's a conductor of energy, right? So water alone is really important for us but salt water specifically is so soothing and rejuvenating and it also helps to cleanse your energy um your energy body so it helps kind of it's like kind of saging but in a bath form okay so it helps clear off um maybe some energies that I don't want to say that you're carrying um, old, you know, maybe you had a bad day like a week ago or whatever and it's um, kind of in here somewhere. It just kind of helps clear that. Um, the salt, the salt water does. And that's why like when you go um, to the beach, you go to a beach vacation and you, first of all, you don't want to leave. <laughs> And you come back 
feeling um, so rested and recharged. It's the, it's the salt water and the salt in the air. It's that whole like, it's the whole vibe, you know? It's clean. It cleans your energy. Um, you can put um, some essential oils in this as well. Um, any that you want. You could do lavender, you could do frankincense. I like to use the Peace Blend from doTERRA. It's got, um, I think it has like frankincense and myrrh in it, and I can't remember the other ones, but um, I really like that one. So whatever feels good to you, you can put in your bath. Now, if you don't have a bathtub so that you can't, um, so that you can't do this, it's okay. Um, what you can do is just use your intention when you're taking a shower. So you can just use the intention that the water is washing away, um, all of those energies that you don't want around you or in your energy field. And um, just imagine them going down the drain. It's fine. And if you wanted to, you could get like uh, one of those pink salt lamps and put it in your bedroom um, and put pink salt in your diet. I That's what I use for all of our salt. We don't use regular salt. So um, those are a couple things you could do if you don't have a bath. Okay, number five is trust. So for me, my spiritual wellness goes right out the door the minute I stop trusting and I start trying to control, okay? So for me, trust is extremely important. Trust in my spiritual team, trust in the universe, okay? If I'm trusting in the enfoldment of my path, so I'm not trying to push and I'm not trying to force things and I'm not trying to make it the way I want it, um, then that leaves me available and open for guidance to come in. Okay, so I'm trusting, it puts me in a receiver position, and so I am available for what wants to come in. And when I'm in that state of flow, it's much easier for my spirit team to communicate with me. Okay, uh, If I'm doubting, like I said before, and I'm trying to force, trying to force things and being impatient, um, I'm actually gonna block the flow and turn the volume down on my spiritual guidance. So when I get into um, the position of I'm gonna force this or this is taking too long or why isn't this happening the way that I wanted it to or you know anything else that we can tell ourselves about the things that we want or our spiritual development when we get into that um, everything just goes block everything just blocks and um, it makes it a lot harder to hear the guidance that's trying to come in from from your spirit team. This is something that I've noticed for myself. Now, this one is um, work. This one's work. It is like a relationship, okay? Because it is a relationship. It's your relationship with your spiritual team, your relationship with the divine, with God, um, universe, all that is, um, whatever your specific term is. Um, it is a relationship. And the more you trust it, the smoother that goes. And um, it is work and it will always be work uh, because we're human beings and we have an ego and we want to push and force and we want our way and we want it now, Veruca Salt. Um, so that, that one is really important. I have found trust, okay? And then I have a bonus one. So number six, is gratitude and the energy of gratitude is like the feeling of unconditional love okay it's the energy of unconditional love um, and it links us gratitude links us directly into the heart center and 
makes it possible for this center, this heart center, to expand and to heal. So when we are being grateful for lessons that we've learned, um, connected to things that may have been negative or things we didn't want, when we're able to be grateful for the lesson rather than being um, bitter for it happening, we can heal. That allows expansion of the heart center and we can heal around that, okay? And this is just my opinion, but in in my opinion, in order to have um, spiritual wellness, you have to be working on your heart center. It's the heart. Everybody wants the third eye. Oh, how can I open my third eye? Um, what are some exercises to decalcify my pineal gland? This thing could be wide open, just as big as ever. If your heart is closed, there's no communication between the two. And in my opinion, you're not ever going to go anywhere. So... I think the heart center is the most important part, the most important piece of your spiritual journey, your spiritual um, awakening, okay, is expanding and healing this center in order to allow what wants to come through, okay? So if you're working on trying to develop your um, intuitive gifts, if you aren't clear here, what comes through can't be clear, okay? That's just my opinion, but I think the heart center is the most important. Um, so a little exercise that you can do if you'd like to, um, when this video is over, get out a piece of paper and write down three things that you are truly grateful for. And Pay close attention to the feeling you get around your heart as you're writing these things and you're thinking about them. What does it do here? For me, it feels like this, like, like a slow expansion. And sometimes it can feel kind of emotional, like extreme joy. Um, and then you'll know that, that way you can kind of understand what I'm talking about. Um, with the feeling of expanding that area. And then if you could do that like every day, um, just write down a couple of things that you were grateful for or um, you could just say them in your mind when you're going to bed at night. You don't have to write them down if you don't want to. Um, those are, that's a really good practice to do is um, gratitude. It helps this expand. So those are my five, well actually six, um, things that I do for spiritual wellness and um, thank you so much for watching I'm, I've got a notification here okay thank you so much for there's not oh my gosh there's another one okay thank you so much for watching and um, I will see you guys um, on another live I was gonna do tomorrow but it's Sunday so I'm not gonna do lives on Sunday but I'm gonna try them do them every other all the rest of the days of the week at 10 a.m um, pacific so hopefully you guys can join me i'm gonna see if i can get this into instagram tv so you guys have a great weekend